Now, by the way, the way this is all done is there's an anterior fitting screw with a dynamic alignment screw in the front, which is threaded. And all it does is apply pressure on the pylon so that it doesn't rotate during gate analysis. Okay? The posterior screws are not even installed at this point. We don't want them in until we're totally satisfied with the relationship between the pylon and the foot clamp. So, at this point, I'm going to tow the foot out just a hair. Oh. Hold on. Okay. Maybe I'm too much, but we'll see. Also, by the way, Mark, this screw, I think you tightened it a little too much. You don't want to over torque that because it's only a stainless steel screw threaded into nylon. So, you want to torque that to about maybe. Uh, Two or three foot pounds, that's about it. That's all you need to keep it from rotating. That feels like it rolls real smooth. Yep, still getting a little thrust. I think I'm going to throw that out just a hair more. You know what we're doing? We're correcting your alignment because your other prosthesis was towed in so far that you ended up rotating your hip out to make it look right. And I think we should correct it at this point. Even though you had five years on the other one, let's. Let's set it up the way it should be and see if you can walk into it. Much better. See the toe out looks... Could, could probably go out a couple of degrees maybe, but we'll see. Yeah, now it looks good. By the way, that little air sound you hear is the air purging out of the little of the hole where, around the shuttle lock. Uh, there's ways to resolve a lot of ways to resolve that. If you, if the patient's really concerned about it during the fitting stage, you can just drill a larger hole in the conical area any way you want, so that the air can exit through a larger port, thus uh, eliminating the noise. Also. When the time comes to finish this prosthesis, all you do is put the foam cover on it and that'll hide any sound that there is at all. There you go. Alignment looks much better. A little bit inconsistent. Once in a while you get a step. We may outset it a couple degrees later also. Now, uh, after you, like I said, after you're satisfied with the relationship between the foot and the pylon, that's when you insert the posterior set screws. These set screws are stainless steel, and all they do is drill through, they screw through the outer rim of the foot clamp, through the pylon wall, and insert into the bolt receiving shank on the, on the inside, on the inside of the foot clamp. Okay, you do not put these screws in until you're totally thrilled with the alignment. Because if you decide later you want to move it, you and you remove these screws, now you're going to have a series of useless holes in the back of the pylon, which will uh, will dramatically affect the durability of the prosthesis. Um, that's why we went to this anterior fitting screw. By the way, all the all the adjustments are done anteriorly until you're satisfied with that. And at that point. The anterior fitting screw can even be removed. It has no purpose at all once, once the posterior screws are locked in. Uh, so now that means also we're happy with the length, we're happy with the, the relationship between the pylon and the foot clamp, okay? If for some reason, well, let me start here. This is the pediatric size foot clamp, okay? Pediatric size is the same thing as the adult, only scaled down. That's why it's all smaller and it's made on a stainless steel rod. The nice thing about the pediatric foot clamp and the kit is that it comes with three lengthening wafers because as we know, the patients grow out of the length, children grow out of the length before they grow out of the socket. So what you can do is stack these between the foot clamp and the foot as the patient grows in height. They come in three lengths, the whole kit comes together with a 3 16 piece, 
a 5 16 piece, and a 7 16 piece. Okay? And during the courses, one of the practitioners said to us, you know, you should make them for adults also, because once in a while you cut the pylon too short, and if you do, what do you do? So we also have an adult size half inch lengthening wafer, so that in the event that there's a boo-boo, or someone cuts the pylon too short, you can always stack this underneath the pylon as well. But make sure that what you do is use the cyanoacrylate adhesive on both surfaces when you, when you glue it together. Now, we're happy with the relationship with the, of the foot clamp and the pylon at this point. So what we're going to do is insert the posterior screws. In fact, you can even take it off now. Okay. That's right, you got that gas drop. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do is put... Now this is, we also, by the way, we selected a Seattle Lightfoot for this particular patient. And the reason why is because of his size and his activity, we wanted to maximize the amount of usable cylindrical pylon surface area. That's why we selected this foot so that the foot clamp mounts deeper inside. Uh, now I'm going to take the other one and insert it. And it's Friday. It's Friday, that's why I have no hands today. And that can be driven all the way down into the foot clamp. When it's, right now I have them driven in just partially. Okay, and they can eventually be driven all the way in. And when they are, those bolts, those screws will actually almost touch the bolt inside the prosthesis. So they're sandwiching the pylon between both surfaces of the foot clamp. You're all set. Good clicker. Here we have the prosthesis on the scale. We have two pounds, 61. And don't forget this is quarter inch material uh, with an ActiFlex in it and with a shuttle lock. of the pylon integrity. And that's very important because remember, we're making our own pylons now. We're not assembling parts anymore. We're creating our own pylons. And you have to know how to evaluate the integrity of your pylon. And by looking at it, you can see now. This one in particular, first of all, all of these are acceptable. All of these are acceptable. Now this one in particular, if you look, you'll see a little bit of a groove down there posterior, okay? That's an acceptable pylon, but you can see that there's that little bit of groove or trough, which we call, from the water running down. Now, you want to minimize that trough. That's acceptable, and that's about at the limit of acceptability. You don't want to aim much more than that. Um, now, the reason why you have that groove is because there was probably a little bit too much moisture on the model, and by the time you got your vacuum, there was so much moisture running down the posterior side, it prevented the two sides of the material from joining each other, okay? 